tuned into Recovery TV, the voice of hope, with your host, John J. Tassoni Jr. Discussions and information on addiction and mental health issues. Now, here's John and today's guest. Welcome to Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. I'm going to switch it up a little bit today. I'm going to talk about bullying, bullying in schools. And my two guests today put on an absolutely phenomenal presentation at Smithfield High School a few months ago, and I asked them both to come on my show today. Reese Rossi and Kaya Gaffney. So welcome, ladies, and thank you for joining us today. I want you to tell me about the Smithfield Youth Council. I know what it's all about, but my 10,000 listeners and viewers don't know what it's about, so tell us. The Smithfield Youth Council is an organization founded by the Town Council of Smithfield, Rhode Island. The Smithfield Youth Council is composed of youth representatives that advocate for teens within the community through events based on their interests and ideas. The Smithfield Youth Council works to establish a positive atmosphere, allowing the youth to communicate and collaborate with others while nurturing their role in the town. So, Kaya, let me ask you this question. How were you able to put this all together? So we were able to put this presentation together with the help and support of Smithfield Youth Council and our advisors, as well as our incredible school administration. They helped us put together Google Slides, Google Forms, and a script, and we were able to use information from our local middle and high school, too. Uh, you know, that's, uh, it's amazing to me, because when I was in the legislature, I did a lot of pieces of legislation about bullying. And we went around the state of Rhode Island and heard from a lot of folks like yourselves and about the issue of bullying in schools and back then in 2004 2006 when I did it it was uh, an habitual problem is it still a big problem in high schools today I'm not saying Smithfield I'm just saying as a general statement yeah it definitely is is it yeah both boys and girls or girls and girls or boys and boys I think it's a mix of all yeah yeah mix of all so in your, in your presentation, uh, which I saw, um, it was very good, very informative. Is it working? We hope so. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes because we really directed our presentation towards the parents mm -hmm. and how the parents of Smithfield can communicate with their kids to make them feel more comfortable with sharing issues they might be having in school rather than necessarily at the kids to tell them to stop bullying? You know, you just hit something right on the head because I was at a, um, a youth soccer game uh, the other day and I'm listening to the parents bullying their kids, basically. I think the parents need more classes than the kids. Now, how do you, how do, you do that? I don't know. But I think it's an issue where people need to take a deep breath. Only like a half a percent of the kids in Rhode Island will ever make it to the next level, i.e. college sports or professional sports. And to torture some of the kids like they do, and I'll take, I'll take it back to the Little League World Series. And Smithfield was in the Little League World Series, but some of the commercials that Little League was running was spot on with some of these parents yelling and screaming and actually killing their kids of, you know, come on, Johnny, you, you shouldn't have let that ball go through your legs and, you know, stuff like that. So how do you, how do you put it all together? You know, do, do, do you have like a, a seminar or something for the parents for them to listen? I know the one that I was at, there was quite a few parents, but have you done any more than what you have done? We have not, but we did film our presentation. Oh, okay. And we will most likely be posting it on our website. Okay. So what's next? So right now we're in the process of planning a presentation for parents again of Smithfield about vaping and about Mm. the state of vaping in our high schools and right. how we think that they can help prevent it. That's another big problem. Yeah. Vaping, yes. vaping, substance use, alcohol is a big problem throughout the state of Rhode Island, not just, we're not saying in Smithfield, we're putting everybody in the, the same bucket, all 39 communities. But I think the more and more we have young people like you 
uh, come out and say that these things are affecting your children. Um, you know, life is so busy right now with a, a lot of single families, single parents, um, you know, kids go to their dads on the weekends or their moms on the weekends and go back and forth and back and forth. It's a, it's a tough scenario. It's a tough scenario. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I, you guys, did you get grades for this? No, Smithfield no. Youth Council is entirely based off of students' interests mm -hmm. as members of our community instead of as students in our school. Mm -hmm. So we don't encourage anyone to use their Smithfield Youth Council projects as ways to get grades for mm -hmm. school because we yeah. want all of our events and projects to be very genuine and be things that we are really seriously interested in. So have you taken it on the road, meaning uh, elementary schools, the junior high, have you done any of that? We have not, but that's definitely something that we can s consider for the later future. Uh, well, we need to talk to your advisors to make sure you do that because I think it's very important. It's very important, you know, when I get the calls, when because uh, I am uh, sometimes, unfortunately, get the calls from sixth graders who have alcohol poisoning, just think of the age of those kids. And I say this to my daughter all the time. My grandson is nine. A couple more years, he'll be in the sixth grade. Imagine me as a grandfather or, or you or your mom and dad getting that call that said, hey, you need to go down to Rhode Island Hospital because your, your son or daughter has uh, got alcohol poisoning at 11 years old. That's a shock. That's a shock. So I, I will tell you, I think the best, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it from the 20,000 foot arena. You got to get in there. You got to get in there to the youth, the kids that are younger than you. They need to hear from you. They don't need to hear from mom and dad because they're going to say, what does mom and dad know? But you know what? Reese and Kaya know. You know. You get it. You get it. And these kids need people like you to look up to to bring them to the next level. And I say this all the time in prevention. If we don't start talking to our kids at a young age, this predicament that we're in, this tsunami of drugs and alcohol that we're in right now is going to continue. So we have to get to the younger kids, maybe do something like with a coloring book, maybe do something with a play, maybe you do other things. I mean. You guys are smart kids. You're smart kids. I mean, to come out and put bullying in the forefront. And I've seen cases that, horrific, horrific cases. Parents that bully their own kids because of gender issues. I seen it in my own eyes when we went to a Catholic private school and this young man broke down in front of the whole committee my hot one in my throat. But well, we're going to take a quick break so I can pay the bills. You've been watching Recovery TV, and I'm your host, Shanta Sony. Bullying is on the forefront here today. We'll be right back after these messages. Now, back to Recovery TV with your host, John J. Tassoni, Jr. Recovery TV is made possible by our supporting sponsors and our title sponsor, AdCare. Now, here's John and today's guest. Welcome back to Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. You're going to switch it up a little bit today. I've been talking about bullying in schools and the Smithfield Youth Council. Reese and, and Kaya are here from the Smithfield Youth Council. Talk about a program that they ran about bullying in schools. and It was a tremendous uh, program because I, I saw it myself. So, la ladies, let me, let me ask you this question. Um, you know, you had a good crowd when I was there. A lot of parents. Any feedback? from the parents about your presentation? So we had a lot of parents obviously expressing their support and saying that they thought it was really interesting to hear a student's perspective on bullying. A lot of times, a lot of school issues come from adults to adults, mm -hmm. which is a great way to convey that information, but it's definitely a different perspective from students. Yeah, you know, I, I think as, as I indicated before, when you talk to young folks, you guys, talking about young folks, it, it, it makes a bigger impact than hearing mom or dad saying, 
don't be pushing Susie around and you know you need to treat her like um, like she's your sister compared to you guys having that conversation with young adults and, and young kids but, but my curiosity is when you see the parents that were in that seminar that you gave or talk that you gave um, and I looked at some of the faces and the expressions on some of the faces like hmm I didn't know that I was being that bad to my child or talk to my child like that so Reese I would ask you this question after your presentation to the group and I know what she said about the adults that she spoke to but what was your takeaway um, I feel like we got a lot of positive feedback and I feel like it was good that parents could hear it from us and also from other students at the middle school and the high school because we had the students fill out a Google form to get more of a range of data about their how they want their parents to react if they were being bullied and how a conversation would go. Has any of the kids or the parents that were at that particular meeting talk to your 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 counselor your she is supervisor uh, over the rec department has anyone talked to her about the program that you had and how maybe you can expand on it maybe how you know maybe more parents should listen to it you know I mean I'm I'm thinking myself that the town manager should put your project on the website and let people watch it you know that's that's what I think and when I see them I'm gonna tell them that because it was so well done that I think a lot of parents I mean we have 22,000 people in Smithfield but not only Smithfield it could be other communities that watch that program because I, I think it was so impactful that more people need to watch it. You can't just do it once. You need to rerun it. So I'm going to have that conversation with that gentleman, that new town manager over in Smithfield. We'll take care of that. We'll get that right on TV. But my, and my, other, my other point is, is that when you have conversations with the, the kids that are in your How many are in the council? Um, this year I think we have about 16 members. Has that grown from last year? Yes, definitely. And we're still accepting new applicants, so. Oh, you have to go through an interview process and stuff like that? There's, is it difficult to get in? <laughs> no, it's a very <laughs> brief interview to get a sense of the student, and there's a short application as well. Nice, nice. And I'd be willing to come and speak to your group again about substance use and mental health, because I think it's very much important that we get it from the ground level and get it up to where it needs to be. So um, application, children, has any other school districts reached out and said, hey, that's a great program, let me, let me implement it in my school? So our um, Smithfield Youth Council is not like necessarily implemented through the high school and the right. middle school, it's for anyone in the town, but we have been in communication with other youth councils in different towns and we want to get together and meet and talk about different ideas that we might have. We should have, we should have a forum, we should have a forum over at the high school and I'd be happy to moderate that forum for you, free. So what about the boys? I'm gonna I'm gonna put it right out there. It seems that males are much more difficult to deal with with bullying as what I saw going around the state than females. I know females upon females sometimes can be very um, impactful. So what about the boys? When when you did that program, did the boys say, hey, you know? forget that, we'll, we'll do what we need to do, or did they jump on board? When we were surveying the students, we actually received a lot of inf a lot of people saying that it's not the people that you might always expect who are the bullies, mm -hmm. and although you might expect a certain kind of student or maybe specific students to be meaner, it's not always them or it's not always just them. Mm -hmm. So we actually received a lot of information about students who are, who seem very nice and very sweet and 
aren't really the same way towards other students all the time. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a um, something that needs to grow on you. Um, you know, they may see it at home, bullying at home, and they bring it into school. Um, and then when they see a program like yours, you know, they may think twice. Um, you know, sometimes, um, you know, parents dismiss uh, kids coming home and said, you know, Johnny beat me up or Johnny, Johnny shoved me in the locker or something like that, the, the real hardcore bullying. And, the, and, you know, they may say, oh, it's, it's nothing. But it's not nothing. It, it's, it's a progression it, because if it's not brought to the forefront, the next time Johnny goes into the locker, it might be a fist. And it might be other things that follow up. So parents need to be concerned when their child comes home and says they've been bullied, that needs to be taken seriously. You know, it's, uh, never mind swooping it off the shoulder. You know, it, it needs to be acted on and acted on swiftly. Because if not, that progression could be ultimately a big deal. And I say that in the fact that I do a lot of work with the health department. We have now some of the highest rates of kids hurting themselves in the country. So please, if you're watching the show and your child comes home from school and says they have an issue, it needs to be reported. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John DeSoni. We'll be right back after these messages. Now, back to Recovery TV with your host, John J. Tassoni, Jr. Recovery TV is made possible by our supporting sponsors and our title sponsor, AdCare. Now, here's John and today's guest. Welcome back to Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. We've been talking about bullying. It's a big, big problem in Rhode Island, in the high schools and elementary schools and the junior highs. And these two young ladies who are my guests, Reese and Kaya, 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 Kaya. Kaya. I got it. I got it now. It's been a half hour. I got it. Um, have done a great presentation in Smithfield with the Smithfield Youth Council um, that I'm going to talk to the town manager about to put it online so people can view it. Because it's such a great presentation. It's a big problem in Rhode Island. And I have two young ladies who have tackled the issue. And I mean tackled it and nailed it. So ladies, welcome again. And thank you for what you did because it's very much needed. Is there anything else that you guys see in 2023 going into 2024 that you'd like to have done besides the other communities getting together and talking about this issue? I understand that it could be, maybe, a website, no website, football game. What, what do you got? What do you got? So we are currently working on a website that will be up and running, and it will have all, of infor all the information about the Smithfield Youth Council. So our prior events that we had, our upcoming events, will have the bullying presentation on the website, information about our executive board and what Smithfield Youth Council is, along with applications for anyone that wants to apply. How do you get your funding? So we receive funding from the town of Smithfield because we are a town founded organization and we've also been working towards doing our own fundraising more this year. Earlier in the year to kick off the whole 2023-2024 session we held a car wash which was very successful and a really fun way to start the year. Well I'm, I'm gonna make a donation. I'm gonna make a donation. Um, the next couple of days, I'll get it over to the town manager to give to your organization because I think you guys are doing a great job and you deserve a lot of credit. So thank you for both coming on. We'd love to have you come on again because it's a very important issue. You've been watching Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. We'll see you next week. <laughs>